everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to another layout lunch date. Yes, now layout lunch date is when we get together, we stand around the water cooler and we talk about everything and anything that has to do about our layouts. And so if you are new to the channel, welcome. And if you hit the show notes below, you will see a playlist where I will have listed other videos where we talk about this very category of layouts. And with that, if you have a, um, you know, a question or something you want to see discussed in a future layout lunch date, please list below because I read every one of those and I make notes of every suggestion. So what I have to my left here is a stack of layouts that we're going to talk about today. I don't know if I'll get through all of them, but we could always have a part two. Yes, I'm going to talk about uh, how I officially have started my big a uh, scrappy goal for the year, which is getting my layouts put away. And then uh, how I started that, what I ran into, which is this, and then a question about school layout. So hang on for that. I hope I don't forget that question. So uh, as I'm starting my layout project, I did something a little different this time. And so what I simply did was I just set up a table in the family room, just a card table, and I just pulled out all the layouts that I needed to put away and I started separating them by year. Regardless if it's missing a photo or a date or journaling, I did it a little different this time because of how many I have. So would you like to see a visual of how many layouts I need to put away? Let's just do that. Okay, so I had nine of these Dollar Tree plastic bags, nine of them, okay? And then along with that, let's just add in four pizza box full of layouts. And then along with that, let's just keep adding. How about a couple iris bins for good measure? So if you add that all up, that was 15 containers, 15 containers of layouts that need addressed in my space. Uh, and some of that was simply they just need put away because of other videos I've done. But then that is not all. I still have a couple more piles that I need to go through. Uh, some is because I have to do a video. I'm working on a go-to design. You know how that goes, okay? So I still have some. It was more than 15 containers. I know. <laughs> so as I started getting those out, what I did was I just simply took out one bag at a time, one box at a time, one bin at a time, and I separated them by year. And so whether it needed journaling or a photo or it's missing a date, whatever it needed, I just simply put it in a pile by year because I thought this time what I would do is I would address it by year. So rather than pulling off eight or nine different albums at a time, I would just pull off one album and work on it. And maybe I could see progress a little sooner than later. So that was my thought process. I did a little different this time. And so then as I was doing that, because uh, for me, even though I don't scrap chronological, I file and organize all of my layouts chronological, except for just a couple trips like Disney, and then also a couple other trips. And then uh, I have an album about uh, that's just about all about us, which is just me and my hubby and childhood memory. So well, I'll talk about that coming up. So as I was doing that, I came across some layouts that did not fit into a year. I had to give it a little bit of thought. And so I thought that's what I would talk about in this layout lunch date, because that's a question I get a lot is where do you put some of these layouts? So if you're not a chronological scrapper, you simply just put them in category of the person or the place. That's easy. But if you're chronological, sometimes you have to think, where are you putting that? So that's what we're going to talk about. So in this layout here, which I just have to say, I love this layout. And when I say mood and feel, this is what I mean. Because when I look at this layout, this absolutely makes me feel like I'm in the 70s in my childhood. I love this. And even the icons I picked, love that. And so, of course, underneath here, I have a lot of journaling. So this was in the 70s. And let me see. I have some journaling covered up. Okay, so I did this layout in 2017. And so even though this was in the 70s, so where am I going to put this? And so when it comes to this topic of where you're going to put a layout, let me just put a disclaimer and say it does not matter any, it does not matter whatsoever where you're putting your layouts as long as you're getting them in an album. It doesn't matter. At one time, I entertained the notion of just having albums and putting in my layouts regardless of the year, the topic, the event. I just wanted to get them in albums. So I asked my little one, 
because ultimately these are going to be her albums someday. I said, would that be okay with you? She said, no, no. Mm -mm. She said, they need to be chronological. I want them by year. So that's, I keep continuing with that process. So with that, I could put this in 2017 because that's when I did the journaling. That's when this reflective page came about, or I could put it in the seventies. I think I have it in here. I think this was 1978, 1979, something like that. I could put it in that year but I don't have an album for the 1978 or 79. So in this case, uh, uh, I'm going to put this in the album, which is not by year, it's a category, all about us. And so uh, unfortunately, my hubby and I do not have a lot of childhood photos. So whenever I do a layout, they'll basically probably fit in one album. I mean, realistically. So I, I'm simply going to put that in basically all about us okay so i wanted to answer that so it doesn't matter oh uh, maybe i'll talk about that right now okay so if you run into the problem where i'm running into because my albums chronologically start in 1997 so say if you're starting to do some reflective journaling you're starting to do some story-based pages and you're starting to do some heritage it's okay if you create an album and you label it the 1970s, the 1960s, the 1990s. It's however you want to do that. So don't limit yourself that an album has to be just one year. So as I go forth in this journey, if I find that All About Us album is getting full, maybe I want to divide it up later down the road that I will label it the 1960s to the 1980s something like that. I want to throw out that idea because as I was going through this process, that was something that went through my mind. I don't have to limit myself to one year per album. I can even combine decades if I want. Or if you have a lot, you can just say the 1980s, um, the 1970s, the 1940s, that you get the idea. So, okay, in this layout here, uh, what do you do in a case when you have a layout that the it spans several years? This photo is 2001, this is probably 2008, and this is 2016. So again, there's no wrong way to put this. <laughs> you could even have an album where you just put layouts in there that has to do with your comparison layouts, where you have comparison photos, or you're doing reflective journaling. Again, there's no wrong way. But I was just going to share what my thought process is when I come across layouts like this. And for me, what I'm going to do right now, of course, you know, you can always change in the future, is that since this is the newest photo of 2016, I will put it in that year, 2016. But you could put any year. You could pick any year. You could even pick the year you did it, okay? Now, in this one right here, this is uh, not photos. These are by Google Images, so thank you, Google, for that. But this is about a favorite movie of our families, or I should say of my hubby. He loves this movie. He laughs so hard. So anyways, what in this case, this movie has been part of our family for many years. So what year would you put it in? I could do it. Uh, let me just see here. I have something covered up. Okay, I did this in 2018. I think I did this before the channel. But anyways, I could put this in our 2018 album because that's when I did the page. Or I could simply look at this layout and say, where do I need, where do I need a filler? So I could look at, um, for the last 10 years, really, I could look through and see wherever I need a filler, I could put it in there because this pertains to so many years. So again, don't limit yourself. You can put your layouts as fillers where you have an empty space because honestly, most people really don't care where we have these just as long as they're in an album. But really, you think about it, our albums really are a storybook and you open it and you want to from beginning to end in a way if you look at it that way chronologically so now in this layout where would I put something like this again this is just my thoughts everybody's going to be different this photo is from 2004 and when did I do this I did this in 2018 Man, I'm telling you, time goes fast, does it not? So where would I put that? I could definitely put it in 2004 that was when the photo was taken or I could put it in 2018 because that's the year the layout was done. And the story part, the journaling part, was done in 2018. So, again, there's no wrong way. I could put it in either one. What will I do in this case? I think I will put it in 2018 
because I was reflecting back and we're also reflecting back to someone who's no longer with us. And in 2004, that person was with us. So that's how I'm looking at it. Again, there's no wrong way. I just want to stress that. You could just put them in an empty album, call it good. Who cares if they're by chronological? Who cares if it's by event? It's just getting that story recorded. But a lot of us, we like things done in a certain way. We know that. Okay, now this layout, uh, let me just look here a minute. This photo was 2015, okay, and I did the layout in 2018. So what year would I put it in? Again, no wrong answer. My journaling is reflective of where I was in my life in 2018, where my little one was in her life, but the photo is in 2015. And let me just say, school was happening very soon for a lot of us. So a photo op that you can get this upcoming school year is if your child is a, an avid reader or if they're reading anything, definitely get a photo of them reading and not, and you, you don't even see their face. It's a great photo op having that book in front of their face. And then also too, don't forget to capture you reading a story to your children at night. I wish I had photos of that. I think I have one photo of me reading to my little one of all those years, of all those years reading those books, I think I have one photo of me reading to my little one. So definitely get those bedtime stories, get them recorded. So with that, I could put it in 2018, 2015. I think I'm going to put it in 2015. So when it comes to me making those decisions, there's no formula. It's just wherever I feel like I want to put it. Okay, now this one is exam an example I get a lot of questions about is this is a story based. There's not even no photo. So I don't even have that as an indicator. And I don't even have an exact year. So what would I do with this? This is about the 1970s, again, of my childhood. So for me, because I don't have a lot of this type of thing, it's going to go in an album along with my hubby. And it's going to be about our childhood memories. So I could absolutely label that album Childhood Memories. I may do that or I may call it All of, all, all About Us or, or I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to label that. I haven't even gave that a thought but I just know it's going to be Childhood Memories. Maybe that's what I'll title it. I think I like that. I think I just made that decision. Yes. Okay now I wanted to show this one even though this is the year 1997. I did this a few years ago, and I will tell you, there's a young hubby, there's a young me, and there's a young little one. Boy, time goes fast. Again, this is in 1997. The reason I wanted to show this is, uh, it would not be hard to say, well, just put this in 1997 and be done with it. But here's the kicker, and I wanted to bring forth this problem, is that in 1997, I was in scrapbooking 12 by 12. I was scrapbooking eight and a half by 11. So how were you going to do that? So what I did was several years ago, I ran into this exact issue. And so what I did, um, when I started scrapbooking 12 by 12 layouts for a while, and then I had to start marrying them with my eight and a half by 11. At that time, I converted every one of my eight and a half by 11 albums to accommodate 12 by 12 for the future. And this is exactly why. So when I go to put this away in 1997, album. I don't have to worry that it's an eight and a half by 11 album. It's a 12 by 12. So as you are scrapbooking and you're going along this journey, sometimes you do have to think long term. Are you always going to scrap six by eight? Are you always going to scrap eight and a half by 11? Are you always going to scrap 12 by 12? And I will suggest that if you're looking at layouts, or I'm sorry, if you're looking at albums, three ring albums are such a time saver. Because say, even if I scrapbook 12 by 12 but I did an eight and a half by 11 that eight and a half by 11 will fit into that three ring system of your 12 by 12 album so I want to throw that out there uh that's something I ran into years ago and but I corrected that okay and I just simply corrected it because uh it was a costly um it was a costly endeavor to switch all those albums over but I'm glad I did it then rather than having to do it now because I have way more albums. Okay, so this is another one. This was done in the, uh, let's see, these photos, these lovely, lovely photos of these feather hair, <laughs> these hair feather attachments. Is uh, My sister said the year is 1981. And so this was part of the load event. Love the load event for stories like this. And so, of course, let me see when I did this. Uh, 2018. Okay, so what year will I put this in? I don't have an album for the 80s, okay? But you can see I might start getting some. <laughs> 
yeah it depends on so again this is going to go in hit in my album of childhood memories and i'm just going to call that good for now but also i have to tell myself if that album starts to get full which that's a blessing not a burden when your albums start getting full and you have to keep buying albums that is a blessing not a burden just want to throw that out there and so if that album starts to get a full um I may have to buy one and label it the 80s or the 90s or the six, the 70s and the 80s. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay, now this was a two-page layout I did for Kit Crunch, and I will have a layout share coming soon. Some of my subscribers have been asking for that, so I will do that. And so these photos were taken in 2000, and I didn't do this layout till 2019. That's 19 years apart. <laughs> yeah. So you just never know what you're going to do in this journey of scrapbooking. So where would I put this? Well, you can definitely put it in the year 2000 because that is the year that these photos were taken. But the story is my reflective journaling, for all, and I did that in 2019. So again, either one of those years, uh, it's not going to be a problem. And it's not going to be a problem for me because in 2000, I was still scrapbooking 8.5 by 11. But since I did that conversion, these will fit in 2000. I don't have that problem. But then uh, if I was to go pull out my 2000 album, you would probably see some of these photos floating in there. So you can divide and conquer. If you have an event or something or a trip that you've covered more than once, it doesn't hurt to split it up. For me personally, I haven't decided on this. That's why it's still in this pile. I'm not sure where I'm going to put this. Uh, it will be, I don't know. It'll be in 2000 or 2019. There's no wrong way to look at that. And I think when I sit down and put this away, I will probably look back uh, and see in year uh, 2000, do I have this type of layout? Do I have several of those? If I do, I'll put it in 2019, call it good. Okay, now here's another one. And for this one, I don't have an exact year. I have an around time. And so as I was talking to my hubby about this, again, we don't have a lot of childhood memories. So that will go simply in an album for childhood memories, even though the rest of my albums are mainly by year. And so uh, this was one of those questions I got as I did this. Someone said, okay, well, you're going to be talking about it now, but the photos were, I don't even know when the photos were, a long time ago. They're black and white. Yeah, a long time ago. My husband said, don't remind him. But anyways, again, this is one of those things. You could put it in the year that these photos were taken. You could put it in an album where it talks about your high school and college days. Or you can have an album that's called uh, Childhood Memories. Or you can have an album that's just about sports memories. There's no wrong way. And I would say in most people's case, it's okay if you do a little bit of both, which is what I'm going to be doing. Now, this is a layout I did that talks about something that spans several years. And on some of these, I don't even know what year it was. So where will I put this? Again? I don't know. If I label that album Childhood Memories, this is not a childhood memory. So I may just put it in All About Us, but I wasn't the only one that saw that. Uh, so the other option would be that I could put this in a year where I simply need a filler, regardless of when it is. Because even though I'm going to be journaling about it now in 2019, it wasn't 2019 when I saw these three different rare sightings. So again, if you have an empty space in an album, you have a layout, you're not quite sure where it needs to go, it's okay to just put it in there, call it good. Okay, now this is another one. Of course, I love this. No photo at all because this Cardabella paper does all the work for me. I love Stephen Duncan's work. This again by Cardabella. So in this case, this is again from 1970s. It's childhood. So uh, I could definitely have an album where it's just simply labeled the 1970s. <laughs> yes, I could put it in that because I had a couple other ones there. Or I could simply put it in an album which just has to do with me, my childhood, my thoughts, my feelings. Again, no wrong way. Now let's talk about one more and I probably will stop there. Maybe we'll do a part two. How about that? We may we'll do a part two. So in this case, I don't even have any idea when this happened and this is i don't even have a photo so not only do i not have a photo i don't even have a year where do i put this and so this is definitely a story-based layout and it was just a memory of my little one <laughs> shifting and sliding on a chair and it was slow motion and i couldn't get to her and she fell on the carpet 
you know, it was funny. She didn't hurt herself. It was just, you know, she was preteen. So she didn't fall. She didn't fall far. She just fell on the carpet, you know. But it was just one of those memories. And we laughed and we laughed. And still to this day, when I think of this memory, I still laugh. And so isn't that precious when you have a memory that your family still laughs about and laughs about. Those are the type of stories that I'm talking about recording. And I don't even have a photo. I have keep calm and try not to laugh because we were schooling. And we were sitting around the table and she was sliding off the chair mat. And she fell onto the carpet of the, of the kitchen rug. And I just laughed. I didn't even help her up. I was laughing. I was laughing so hard. So with that being said, if you have a family me a memory, a family favorite and you just don't have a photo, still record that story. Just journal it all out. Add some elements that add to the story. And then where are you going to put it? Again, you can put it in. You can just guesstimate. And so I think my uh, daughter told me, I think she was around 10 or 11 when this happened. So I could guesstimate that year and stick it in an album, call it good. Or I can put it in 2019 because we're still laughing about this memory. Or let me see when did I do this. I don't even have a year when I did this. I didn't even, I don't even have a year when I did it, I guess because it doesn't matter. So I could put it in 2019. I could put it in when she was 10 years old. Or if I simply need a filler, stick it in there. It's a family memory. So my point is it doesn't matter the year. It's that story that you're after. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And I hope that wasn't too much talking. So talking about homeschooling, let me get to my question of the day. The question is when you're doing school layouts, do you put them at the beginning of the school year? Let's say, do you put that in 2018? Or do you put it at the end of the school year, 2019? Or do you go by event? Say if the band concert was in 2018, that's where you're putting it. Or uh, the field trip was in 2019. Do you put that in there? So you split up your school years. Or do you simply say... Uh, Johnny was in uh, sixth grade in 2016, so everything will go in 2016. Or do you say Johnny uh, finished sixth grade in 2017, so do you put his layouts in 2017 when it comes to school layouts? And so that is something I still to this day have not figured out. I'm still working on that. Do you put things at the beginning of the year or the end of the school year? And the reason I'm asking that is because on my school layouts, which we'll be talking about that in the fall, is that I do basically a four-page layout spanning the whole year. So what year do I put it in? Beginning or the end? Hmm. Interesting conversation around the water cooler. So tell me what your thoughts are, are on that. I know there's no wrong way, but I like to see how other people do things. So that is what I have for this layout lunch date. Again, I still have another pile. Uh, maybe I'll come back in a day or two and we'll do another layout lunch date. Talk about this even more. So you can see some layout examples that uh, kind of uh, threw a monkey in the wrench. I had to put them in a separate pile. And I had to take a moment and say... What year are you putting that? And so again, you can see in my previous examples, it's a little bit of everything. It all determined, it all is really determined on where you want it. And sometimes where you put that, it really doesn't make any, um, it's not a set formula. You can kind of pick and choose. That's what I wanted to say. So that's all I have for today. Come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to do. Bye.